I liked English very much, and so um, I had to really to choose between arts or science. And um, I thought about this a little bit, and then it became very clear to me I I had to do science because, in much as I love uh, literature. Um, Science gives you an objective truth. Cambridge, a city that lives to the rhythm of its famous universities. This small English town situated north of London draws the tourists, but not only them. You come here for the quality of life Cambridge offers, but also to get a feel for the excellence of European universities. Cambridge Way of Life is uh, very laid back, um, studious. The student life is just perfect because like, it's, it's just the perfect size of the city. Uh, you've got history, you're close to London, and you've got beautiful countryside around, so you couldn't have more. People come to Cambridge to study, but also for research. And among the various subjects of research, stem cells, a major source of therapeutic progress in the view of many scientists. For the general public, this field is mysterious, yet a source of hope. For those to come, yes, definitely. I think it would be phenomenal, uh, amazing. Uh, if what they say is likely to happen, happens, it will change people's perceptions and the way they live. Whether it's controversial or not is, uh, isn't really the issue, whether it can help some people or not is, uh, is the issue. So, yeah, sometimes you have to, you know, break new barriers. It doesn't always agree with people, but it needs to be done sometimes. It's here, behind the walls of the Wellcome Trust Centre for Stem Cell Research, that Austin Smith is trying to find the answers to the questions he's been asking himself since the very beginning of his career. Better understanding stem cells, and the processes by which they follow different paths of development. That is still something wonderful and endlessly fascinating for him and for his whole team at the centre. For me, the early stages are really interesting. I think I find embryos really beautiful. And how they decide that, you know, this at a certain time they're going to one tissue is going to be formed and you know you're going to have some cells that have to wait until they turn into something in particular and how it actually gets patterned. This is what's exciting to me because it's, it just happens by itself. You start with a single entity and then you get something that's um, multifaceted. I guess it's the, the fact that this is a type of cell that's just so unique. This is a type of cell that's immortal. I mean, and the other kinds of cells that are immortal are cancer cells, are, are cells that have in some way um, mutated um, to have uncontrolled growth. But, but these are cells that are, are kind of a normal part, we hope, we think, of, of our development, yet they can kind of live forever uh, if we treat them appropriately in, uh, in the laboratory environment. So I think that's just kind of exciting that they're so special. It just fascinates me. Uh, so I want to know the answers. And then, you know, every, every time you get a step nearer and you think, several times I've thought, oh, well, I can see that, you know, five years' time, the end of my next grant, we'll have solved everything, and what will I do then? And I never have an answer to what I'll do then, but n actually now it's very clear to me that we can never get to the end of this, because you just open up new uh, facets on the problem. Showing the way, that's what these laboratories really do, with research into pluripotency of stem cells as the common denominator linking the members of the center. For a long time, Austin Smith thought that it was enough if a researcher could ask a question and then conduct experiments to try to find the answer. A lonely job that perfectly suited this discreet man. But ultimately, Austin Smith realized that to find the answers, you have to have the resources, financial, technical, and of course, the right people. They can do quite well without me, actually. In fact, sometimes I wonder, how far they could go without me, but um, <laughs> I like to think maybe this is also just an illusion that uh, I have some some role in this, uh, even if only to get them to um, talk about and explain and think more clearly about what they're doing. Oh, so this is a normal version of it. This the full lens is normal version. It's he he's thinks about things really carefully. He he he's a deep person. He has, 
He has a lot of really good ideas, and he does, he thinks carefully. He doesn't rush into things just because other people are doing them. He does things for, for deep-seated interest. It's always just, he just wants to know the answer. There's never sort of aggression there, or you just, uh, he, he's just a very sort of inquisitive mind, I think, and, uh, and yeah, thinks very carefully about what he says, and always, always comes up with the right question, I think. Austin may have um, a hard reputation outside, in particular in meetings where he, he can be quite critical of, um, of the work. But, uh, uh, and sometimes people may think, oh, Austin is uh, this uh, uh, very hard guy, it must be quite difficult to work with him. It's quite the opposite. Um, so from all the labs I know, I would say working in Austin's lab is probably the easiest environment to do your work and uh, to have um, uh, a good relationship uh, with your boss. There is no point in doing what we do if we are not going to have high standards. You know, we have to believe that uh, we are actually the best at doing this. To be the best is a daunting objective, but much hope is placed in this research into stem cells. The future of so-called cellular therapies depends on discoveries in the field. Regenerative medicine, as this is also called, could in the not too distant future use these stem cells to regenerate tissues or damaged organs, and also offer therapeutic treatment for numerous illnesses. This reality is omnipresent for the scientists at this Centre for Stem Cell Research, even if the medical application of their work and their discoveries is not necessarily what's behind their commitment. Actually getting as far as thinking about the clinical applications, that, that had to wait until the late 90s when the first human embryonic stem cells were made. So it's, it doesn't, it's something that just comes along the way. You start to imagine that what we actually are interested in could also be interesting for other purposes. If you only uh, focus on the very near to clinic uh, types of science, you won't have these kind of crazy ideas that you're allowed to fiddle with in the lab that then give rise to something that's truly useful and revolutionary. Those big steps, I think, uh, generally come from the, the more fundamental. If doctors want to do the right sort of work with stem cells, they, they really have to understand the basic biology, not just apply it. Uh, they have to really, really understand these cells. These cells have huge potential. Um, and um, at the moment, we try to understand the biology. But in the future, I mean, no doubt that um, these cells, because of uh, the properties of these cells, they, they will be used in, um, in, in medicine, so in applications such as regenerative medicine. I guess the dream is, is making things in the dish and putting them into humans. That may or may not happen. Hopefully, it will. But there's so many other things the cells could be used for, whether it's drug discovery, whether it's uh, you know, being able to do sort of uh, pharmacology in a dish. There's, a, there's so many potential applications, and some of them are all already being realized, but some of them maybe we haven't fully thought of yet, and some of them will surprise us, and that's why it's exciting, I think. It's almost like a game. It's like an intellectual curiosity to, to understand what these cells are. Now, I could tell, tell you all in many different ways why it's important and why it can be important for new medical treatments, and I do believe that. But that's not actually why I do it. Curiosity is what drives Austin Smith, together with a good dose of obstinacy. Even if, as he himself admits, he really hasn't the time anymore to work at the laboratory bench. Today, he coordinates major European research projects on stem cells, a recognized authority and recipient of awards for his work, like this year the Louis Jonté Prize for Medicine. He now travels Europe and the world to promote his ideas. This leaves him with little time for other activities. But does it matter? Austin Smith doesn't need time for other things. Research is his life. The search for answers that only science can bring. I mean, it is quite uh, a tough job. So the thing, you know, you asked me before about hobbies. I don't really have any hobbies because my hobby is, uh, is science. Mm -hmm.